These are the dumbest purchases lottery winners ever made. From spending 120,000 pounds to buy land on the moon, to scooping 3 million pounds for breast enlargement for herself and two sisters, these winners went insane. Beginning with Evelyn Adams. Evelyn Adams made history as the first person to win the lottery twice. Initially, she secured 3.9 mil in October 1985 followed by another windfall of 1.4 million just four months later, a probability of approximately 1 in 17.3 trillion. Despite her remarkable luck, Avalyn acknowledged her diminishing lottery fortune, declaring her intention to quit playing. Rather than continuing with lottery tickets, Evelyn opted for a strategic move, investing in various businesses, including the convenience store where she purchased the lucky tickets. However, this prudent decision couldn't offset her underlying gambling issue. Instead of curbing her tendency, she redirected her winnings to Atlantic City casinos, depleting her entire remaining fortune on slot machines. The consequences were significant. Her businesses faced successive failures, and by 2012, Evelyn found herself residing in a trailer park. In candid remarks to the media, she highlighted the sobering reality that winning the lottery didn't live up to its glamorous reputation. Number 11. Colin Weir Back in 2011, Colin struck a gold with 161 million pounds in the Euro Millions jackpot. But Colin and his wife Christine took things to a whole new level. They shared their fortune with family, friends, and charities, living a life of luxury with fancy properties, cars, and dreamy vacations. But this guy had a goal that kicked his enthusiasm into high gear. He wanted to own his local football team, Partick Thistle FC. So what did he do? Well, he pumped 2.5 million pounds into the club, clearing debts and supporting the youth academy. However, not everything went according to Colin's game plan. Financial troubles, poor performance, and a hostile takeover bid threw some unexpected challenges his way. What was his next action in the midst of the challenges? Despite the hurdles, Colin had big dreams, buying the stadium and handing it over to the fans. Now, that's a goal worth cheering for, but the beautiful game can be a roller coaster. In 2019, facing the ups and downs, Colin withdrew his support and sold his shares to a passionate fan group. Tragically, Colin's journey came to an end later that year at the age of 71. But despite how captivating and impressive his spending is, this other guy, Peter Lavery, went all the way to whiskey. Number 10. Peter Lavery the Belfast bus driver Peter Lavery turned his 10.2 million pound lottery sensation into a life of wonder, mansion, and world travel. He quit his job two days after he won the lottery in 1996. Most of us might splurge on the usual suspects, but not Peter. He went full throttle, investing in a pub, a hotel, and even a taxi company. After his win, he once took his 10 closest pals to a five-star resort in St. Lucia in the Caribbean. This happened not soon after he partied for four or five days with 22 people in New York for St. Patrick's Day. This guy's action later left many rubbing their eyes in disbelief. Peter Lavery, the man with a Midas touch, decided to put four million pounds into a whiskey distillery. Not a yacht, not a private island, a whiskey distillery. And not just any distillery, mind you. He took an old building in Belfast, sprinkled some renovation magic, and voila! The first whiskey distillery in the city in over a century was born. Yet the name of the brand was interesting. Ever heard of the Danny Boy brand? Peter named his whiskey after the famous Irish song Danny Boy. Now, who wouldn't want to sip on a glass of Danny Boy and let the wonders of the Irish melody unfold? But let's take a moment to ponder. If you strike it rich, would you follow Peter's whiskey-making footsteps, or are you more of a sip-and-enjoy type? After some setbacks, Lavery resurfaced with a new brand, Titanic Whiskey. But Peter's whiskey venture is still pouring in profits. Number 9. Greta and Tony Dodd Greta and Tony Dodd were a retired couple from Lancashire, England. When they won 2.4 million pounds, or 3.3 million US dollars, in the National Lottery in 2007, they decided to spend their money on the usual things, like a new house, a car, and holidays. But they also had a more unusual priority, new knees. 
Greta, a dance enthusiast at heart, had to bid farewell to her passion due to pesky joint issues. With their newfound fortune, the Dodds embarked on a knee rejuvenation journey, splurging 10,000 pounds each on knee replacement surgery. Now, you might be wondering, why knees? Well, it turns out that dancing dreams can be as priceless as any exotic getaway. The Dodds swear by their decision, proclaiming it to be the best thing they ever did. Who knew a lottery wish could be as practical as it is peculiar? While their purchase was not dumb in itself, it was certainly unusual. Most people would probably not think of knee surgery as a lottery wish. Number 8. Keith Goff Keith Goff's lottery triumph turned to tragedy. A 9 million pound jackpot, a dream life in the making, and the excitement of newfound wealth went downwards. Keith, alongside his wife Louise, hit the jackpot in June 2005, setting the stage for a life-altering adventure. Luxuries like racehorses, fast cars, and an executive box at Aston Villa became part of their newfound reality. This man paid 250 grand for a racehorse that ultimately led to his downfall. Keith's extravagant spending spree left him penniless, alone, and battling the demons of alcoholism, ultimately succumbing to a suspected heart attack at the Princess Royal Hospital in Telford, Shropshire. In the early days of his windfall, Goff, once behind the wheel of a T-registered Skoda, found himself in disbelief. Pinch myself in disbelief. The dreams that had eluded him all his life were suddenly tangible. Little did he know this jackpot would become a double-edged sword. Two years post-win, the fairy tale unraveled. Keith parted ways with his wife of 25 years, spiraling into a cycle of heavy drinking and seeking solace in the confines of the Priory Rehabilitation Clinic in Birmingham. As the money poured in, so did the misfortune. Goff's encounters with conmen drained 700,000 pounds from his pockets, leaving him not only financially crippled, but emotionally shattered. My life was brilliant, but the lottery has ruined everything, he lamented. Keith Goff's spending might be insane, but what did you think of a man who bagged a million quid and used it to buy land on the moon? Number 7. David Copeland David struck gold with a 1 million pound jackpot in 2000, but his story takes an unexpected turn. While many would envision a life of extravagance, David chose a frugal path, indulging in the simple joys of baked beans for dinner at his rural Hertfordshire abode. The wonder doesn't stop there. After the big win, David pops open supermarket champagne for a modest celebration, only to follow it up with a celestial splurge. He bought land worth 120,000 pounds on the moon, Venus, and Mars. A Concorde enthusiast at heart, David soared through the skies on the supersonic plane not once but twice before it bid farewell in 2003. His extravagances also include annual cruises and front row seats to the tunes of cabaret star Jane McDonald. And here's the twist. Rather than lounging in luxury, David takes the wheel as a 22-pound-an-hour chauffeur for hire, steering through the lanes of high society, upgrading from the 60s two-bed to a semi-detached four-bed for 192,500 pounds. David's frugality shines through, proving that he's no typical lotto big spender. However, this man from Georgia funded a crystal meth ring with his lottery wins. Number 6. Ronnie Music Ronnie Music hit the jackpot with a dazzling 3 mil in lottery winnings. After this, the guy decided to roll the dice in a way that nobody expected. Ronnie invested his fortune not in stocks or real estate, but in a crystal meth ring. He went all breaking bad with his newfound riches. Imagine the amazement and wonder as he dives headfirst into the risky business of buying and selling crystal meth. This guy's pockets are full of lottery cash, but he attempted to peddle a whopping 11 pounds of crystal meth with his street value soaring over 500 grand. Now that's a high stakes game. But hold on, there's more. Federal agents swooped in and uncovered a jaw dropping treasure trove. Over $1 million worth of meth firearms, thousands of rounds of ammunition, and a cool 600 grand in cash. Ronnie Music Jr. isn't just your average lottery winner. He's the protagonist in a real-life thriller that leaves us with mouths open in awe. 
Just like Ronnie Music Jr., this other guy won 27 mil in the lottery, but ended up blowing all his money in just five years and started living in a shed covered in poo. Number 5. David Lee Edwards David Lee Edwards, a man whose life took a wild turn after winning a quarter share of the colossal $280 million Powerball jackpot in 2001, was a convicted felon. After hitting the jackpot, Edwards celebrated his newfound fortune with a lavish Malibu wedding to his girlfriend, Shauna Maddox. The spending spree kicked off in style, and boy did he make it rain. From a jaw-dropping $1.6 million mansion to a neighboring $600,000 house, Edwards wasn't holding back. Luxury cars? Yeah, he had them. A $90,000 Dodge Viper and a $200,000 Lamborghini Diablo, just to name a few. But wait, there's more. The icing on the extravagant cake was a $1.9 million private Learjet. In a bid to invest wisely, Edwards dabbled in a fiber optics installation company and a limo business, throwing a cool 4.5 mil into the mix. And if that's not enough drama, he shelled out half a million in a custody battle over his teenage daughter Tiffany. But here comes the sudden turn. The dazzling lifestyle didn't last. Edwards burned through $3 million within just three months of winning, and $12 million in the first year. The tale takes a dark turn, with overspending and drug addiction taking center stage. Fast forward to 2006, and Edwards and Miss Maddox found themselves penniless, living in a storage shed. The hardships continued, with reports of dire living conditions. Miss Maddox eventually moved on and remarried, leaving Edwards behind. In a tragic turn, Edwards passed away in 2013 at the age of 58, having exhausted all his winnings and leaving debts in his wake. Number 4. Sarah Cockings Sarah Cockings, a powerhouse from Whitley Bay, Tyneside, who after hitting the jackpot in 2006, didn't just stop at treating herself, she went above and beyond for her loved ones. Sarah not only splurged on a house for her parents, but also gifted her sisters, Emma and Alex, with life-changing plastic breast surgery. But here's where the story takes an unexpected turn. Sarah recently spilled the beans on her own boob journey. She underwent a breast operation because, as she puts it, they were wrecked by breastfeeding. And now people on the street are reportedly asking, are those the lottery boobs? Now, that's a question you don't hear every day. In a candid revelation at a celebration for the lottery's 25th birthday, Sarah shared, Just after I won, I bought my two sisters boob jobs. Everyone remembers that. But now I've had one myself because mine were wrecked by breastfeeding. It's my two-year boob birthday. I love them. The enthusiasm is contagious. But the spending spree doesn't end there. Sarah, fueled by her newfound fortune, also treated herself to a Mini Cooper and a Range Rover Sport. And in a move that showcases her commitment to personal growth, she returned to university after the massive win. So if you think Sarah Cocking's spending on boobs was frivolous, then take a look at Britain's youngest national lottery winner, who won 1.8 million pounds of prize money and spent it on breast enlargement. Number 3. Callie Rogers Callie Rogers, who at the tender age of 16 struck gold with a nearly 2 million pound lottery win in 2003. She was a checkout girl at the co-op in Cockermouth, Cumbria, earning £3.60 an hour, suddenly catapulted into the world of multi-million pound winnings. Callie Rogers became an overnight sensation, and her spending took the term splurge to a whole new level. She spent £18,000 on boob jobs and £300,000 on a wardrobe that could make any fashionista jealous, and £500,000 on gifts for friends and family. Callie's wallet was a whirlwind of activity, leaving her, well, penniless. But that's not where the story ends. In 2021, we found Callie facing a 22-month driving ban after her 4x4 decided to take a detour into a hedge while she was apparently high on cocaine, police pursuits, pepper spray, and country lane escapades. Then, in 2018, Callie faced an unfortunate night out that ended in an assault by two women leaving her with broken ribs, smashed teeth, concussion, and permanent sight damage. 
And just when you think you've heard it all, in March 2021, news broke that the lottery winner was claiming universal credit despite her 2003 windfall of 1.8 million pounds. However, she soon regretted her decisions and said she was happier before she won the lottery. She lost most of her money and became depressed and suicidal. She also had to have corrective surgery to fix the damage done by her previous operations. She said she wished she had never had the surgery and that she was happy with her natural body. The next young lottery winner on our list promised to use the money wisely, but it went the opposite direction. Number 2. Jay Vargas Jay Vargas was 19 years old and a construction worker from South Carolina when he became the lucky winner of a staggering $35.3 million in the 2008 Powerball jackpot. Jay wasted no time in making bold moves, opting for the lump sum of $17.3 million. He declared his intention to buy a new house, a car, and a motorcycle. The epitome of living the dream, right? Demonstrating a level of future planning that would make financial experts nod in approval, Jay outlined his responsible intentions. His priorities were to buy his mother a house, quit his job, and set up trust funds for his siblings. Hiring an accountant, who happens to be his aunt, and planning to engage a lawyer and financial consultant, Jay seemed poised to join the league of lottery winners who handled their windfalls wisely. However, the reality check hit hard. Despite initial aspirations, Jay's financial stability took a nosedive. Instead of growing his wealth, he invested in schemes that seemed to do the opposite. The grand finale of his investment, which seemed awkward, was a TV show called Wrestlelicious Takedown. Imagine an all-female wrestling show with tight clothing and dry humor. Launched with the help of Johnny Caffarella and Jimmy Hart, the show received scathing reviews and was yanked off the air after just 13 episodes. As the wrestling dreams faded into obscurity, so did Jay's fortune. The show's failure left everyone wondering, where is Jonathan Vargas now? After disappearing from the media spotlight, his current whereabouts remain a mystery, leaving us with a tale of amazement, curiosity, and wonder about a young lottery winner's journey from dreams to the unpredictable world of wrestling. Number 1. Michael Carroll Diagnosed with learning disabilities and facing a tough upbringing, Michael's life took an unexpected turn when he snagged a 9.7 million pound UK lotto win at the tender age of 19. So what does a teenager with a newfound fortune do? Well, Michael bought a mansion and decided to build his very own racetrack in his backyard. Yes, you heard me right a racetrack for his luxury cars. And spoiler alert, it didn't end in the glamorous tale you might expect. Amidst mansion purchases turned into demolition derbies, banger racing tracks, and a showcase of crashing cars, Michael didn't forget his roots. Despite a strained relationship with his family, he generously handed one million pounds each to his mom, sister, and aunt, giving away a substantial chunk of his winnings. But it doesn't stop there. Facing the complexities of managing his newfound wealth, Michael sought financial advice and set up an investment bond, accumulating 3.9 million pounds. Yet this saga doesn't shy away from the dramatic. Living large in Swaffham after hitting the jackpot, Michael's mansion became the epicenter of a bizarre tale involving blackmailers and a tragedy that shook him to his core. Five of his Rottweiler's throats were cut by these blackmailers. He came out one morning and saw the scenario. This chilling scene led Michael to fork over 130,000 pounds to make the blackmail nightmare vanish. After that, he made a decision to leave Swapham with his family, leaving behind a chapter of mystery. Michael's personal life takes a wild turn. He married his pregnant girlfriend, Sandra, but the marriage took an unexpected route involving accusations of prostitution and drugs, resulting in a settlement that left Sandra with 1.4 million pounds. But what's a millionaire's life without a touch of extravagance? Michael Carroll knew how to throw a party, dropping a cool 50,000 pounds on a single party. Prostitutes were VIP guests at these parties. And beyond that, Michael claims of sleeping with over 4,000 women including up to eight in a single night. Now, the big question is, where is Michael Carroll today? The high-rolling lottery winner is now in Scotland, working as a logger, earning a humble 10 pounds an hour. So, these are the dumbest lottery purchases. 
Their stories are characterized by unexpected twists, turns, and challenges accompanying their newfound wealth. But it also functions as a cautionary narrative for us. These stories serve as a cautionary tale, a vivid reminder that immense wealth doesn't guarantee happiness ever after. So what do you think about these lottery winners? Let's hear your thoughts in the comment section.